Brennan Raymond Smokey was a 27-year-old from Delio, Mississippi. He loved to skateboard, but was not an outdoors type of guy. On July 24th, 2019, Brennan and two other men got into a car chase with police. When it ended in a ditch next to a highway, Brennan ran off. Or did he? Either way, he was never seen again. I'm Ed Denzel, and this is Unfound. honest. How many of you have watched a police chase on TV? Go ahead, raise your hand. Nobody else can see. Frankly, I'm sure many of you have done so. What is it about somebody trying to run from the cops that makes turning the channel almost impossible? Is it because we want the person or people to be caught? Or is it because in some rebellious way, we want to see the suspect get away, maybe just this once. Because I think we've all done it. We've all at one point while watching a chase said, well, here's what I would do to get away. I would dump the car outside a mall and run inside. I'd drive the truck into a car garage so the helicopter overhead couldn't see me. Then I would abandon the truck and calmly walk away as the police came whizzing by. If I were on a motorcycle, I'd find a traffic jam and weave in and out where the police cars couldn't fit through. Or, in a real-life example that you can find on YouTube, a driver in a Dodge Challenger drove so fast, he outran the police cars and the helicopter. True story. Yes, for some reason... We live vicariously through these people who flee from police. Yes, we know it's wrong, but we fantasize anyway, even though many of us don't even have a felony on our record. I guess it's just human nature. Well, in the disappearance of Brennan Smokey, he allegedly was one of two passengers in a car driven by a guy who decided to run from the cops. The chase ended on the side of the highway. The driver ran but got caught. The other passenger stayed put. But Brennan, or the person who was allegedly Brennan, more on that later, ran off and was never caught. And we're left to wonder what happened in hot pursuit. And now a summary of the case. Despite being from Mississippi, Brennan Smokey was not an outdoors type of guy. He didn't like to get dirty, so he stayed away from things like sports. Instead, Brennan liked to skateboard, and he really liked the ladies. Unfortunately, Brennan got into trouble as a teenager and got sent to jail. This would be a common theme for him over the next several years. In fact, Brennan got out of jail in January 2019, seven months before he would disappear. The causes were mainly for drugs and failures to appear in court. However, somehow, Brennan still managed to have relationships with different women, even one who was in jail herself. But for that time in 2019, while living at home with his mother, Brennan managed to stay out of trouble. So on July 24, 2019, Brennan's mother Missy came home from work. Brennan was there. Nothing was unusual. Missy then took a nap on the couch. She awoke an hour later to scuffling sounds coming from Brennan's room. When she entered, Brennan had one of his friends, Chris, in a headlock. And a girl Brennan had been seeing, Kayla, also in a headlock. By Missy's estimation, they were not fooling around. It was a serious fight. She demanded all three to leave. And they did so. However, 20 minutes later, Brennan came back to get a bag, 
then left again. It wasn't until about 36 hours later that Missy found out that Brennan, Chris, and another young man, Dakota, had been involved in a police chase only an hour after Missy kicked Brennan, Chris, and Kayla out. Chris and Dakota were caught at the car. However, Brennan fled the scene. Police did not search the area, thinking Brennan would eventually pop up. He was never seen again. If you read all the news articles regarding Brennan's disappearance, they all portray a very straightforward sequence of events. However, once all of the factors are considered, many questions remain. Number one. Why does the description of the man who successfully ran away from the car not match how Brennan looked at the time? Number two, what are we to make of a YouTube video that says Brennan's disappearance was a gang-related murder? And number three, why did Chris first claim Brennan was in the car then change his story, saying another man was actually the person who successfully escaped? Brennan's family is fairly convinced he was not the person who ran from the car at the end of the chase. The guest for this episode is Brennan's mother, Missy Smokey. Unfound news. It's the end of the month again already. You know what that means. Newsletter time. If you're on the list, look for it in your inbox tomorrow, November 1st. If you don't get it, you're probably not on the list. But you can get on the list if you email me at unfoundpodcast at gmail.com. Next, some of you might have noticed that Mike Moran has been charged with sex trafficking and promoting prostitution in Ohio. He was featured prominently during our coverage of the disappearance of Megan Lancaster. For the record, this breaking news does not mean he had something to do with Megan's disappearance. Finally, October 25th, 2020, just a few days ago, would have been my mother's 80th birthday. Rest in peace, Ma. Where you can find Unfound. Unfound supports accounts on Podomatic, iTunes, Stitcher, Instagram, Twitter, Spotify, Deezer, Facebook, and YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, please join us on our podcast channel for the Unfound live show. All of you can talk with me and I can answer your questions. You can email the program at unfoundpodcast at gmail.com. Contribute to Unfound at patreon.com forward slash unfoundpodcast. You can also contribute at PayPal paypal.me forward slash unfound podcast and do not forget the website the unfound podcast.com i'm so happy to have on this episode of unfound the mother of brennan smoky missy smoky missy welcome to unfound thank you welcome Let's start where we usually do. Uh, I like to talk about uh, the family involved. So, Missy, why don't you tell me about your family? Uh, besides Brennan, how many children do you have? Where does Brennan fall in that line? Why don't, you, why don't we start there? Okay, I was married. I had three kids, a set of twins. Wow. Brennan's the baby. I've lost one child to brain cancer oh, 10 no. years ago. No. Then I lost a husband two years ago in February, and now Brennan's been missing wow. since July 24th of 20, oh, what, 2010, no, 2019. 2019, yes. That's a lot of loss in a very short amount of time, Missy. Yes. I didn't know, uh, the listeners should know, I didn't know a couple of these things. I did not know that you had a, a child that died of brain cancer. I'm, I'm very, very sorry to hear that. Thank you. Uh, is that something that runs in your family, or is it just uh, a weird, uh, you know, unfortunate circumstance? It was unfortunate. Okay. He so. was. He was. Ryan was my sick baby. You know, out of the twins. You know, he's the one. If a common cold, he got in the hospital for. Mm -hmm. You know, so he was always my sick baby. 
And he's the one that got brain cancer. Yes, sir. Wow. How old? He was 21 when he passed. Uh, and he was the twin. Yes. And the other, I guess the other twin is still around. Yes, he's still alive. He's got two kids. Okay. Married, wife. Okay. And then Brennan uh, was the baby. How long, how much after the twins uh, were born did you have Brennan? Three years later. Three years later. Okay. How did they all uh, three get along? I guess they're all boys. How did uh, how did the twins get along with their younger brother Brennan? Um, I, they didn't like that little that little child running, wanting to play with him. <laughs> they thought they were bigger than him. So, uh -huh. but but once Brennan got older, it was okay. Okay. How did Brennan feel about having two older brothers that were twins? I mean. Uh, do twins run in your family, or was that, once again, just some weird quirk of genetics? No, tw twins and triplets are on my side, Do my they? generation. Wow, okay. So. Well, that would explain it when then. They said that, when, they said, when they said you, you, I was having twins, I said, oh, no, check to make sure it's not a third one. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Bren, I guess Brendan was just a single then. Um, and he's born three years. After the twins are, he has these twins as older brothers, and uh, but it sounds to me like once they got older, uh, of course, then if one of the twins died when he was 21, I guess Brennan would have been about 18. So um, uh, there, you have all sons, no daughters. No daughters. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about Brennan. Uh, tell Brown, tell the listeners a little bit about Brennan as. Uh, uh, a little boy, a teenager. What were he, what was he into? What he liked to do? His personality. Brian was um, he was a pretty boy. He was a skateboarder. You know, um, anything that didn't cause him to get dirty, that's what he did. <laughs> it was all it was all about the girls. Um, you know, where the twins were hunting and fishing, and Brian didn't want none of it. Didn't like to get he, dirty, huh? Like I said, no, God, no. Okay. The kid would change clothes three or four times a day. Huh. Okay. Were, were your other two sons like that, or were they different? Oh no, my uh, Brandon and Brandon, they were, um, like I said, they were about hunting, fishing, mm -hmm. and you know, being in the woods. Yeah. Okay, so Brennan was uh, a little different. He wanted to stick to the concrete, the sidewalks, the buildings. Wanted to stay away from that. I have to admit, as a country boy, I used to go out in the woods and play in the dirt and stuff all the time. Okay, so he was into that. He was into skateboarding, uh, into girls, I guess you said. Uh, anything oh, yeah, else? he was a pretty boy. A anything else that he, that he was into? Sports or anything? Uh, he played sports for a little bit, but that just wasn't his cup of tea. You know, baseball means you get dirty. Football mm -hmm. means you get dirty. Mm -hmm. He wasn't about getting dirty. Okay. Yeah, if you're going to play sports, uh, you usually have to get dirty uh, unless you're maybe playing basketball or something. Anything inside maybe, but outside, yeah, you're going to get dirty. Okay. So he's he's into that. Um, high school, graduate from high school. Uh, what, what was uh, the situation with that? Um, he didn't graduate. Uh, he was in the process of taking a CBB when his dad first started getting sick, but they could never diagnose him until a couple of years down the line, and that's when we found out he had bone cancer. Wow. Okay, so Brendan never graduated from high school? No. Okay. All right, so what did he do instead? Did he... Did he get a job? Uh, I'm guessing he was living at home with you. What What did he do? He well, he he lived back and forth between me and his dad because at one point me and his dad had separated. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, he um well when he was 16, 16 turned 17, he took a drug charge for his girlfriend at the time, wow. and they didn't process. He was 18, so. He got put on drug court, but because of me and his dad separating and his dad ended up the hospital and me trying to work, um, when they did, when he wasn't reporting him for drug court, then that's when he put him in jail. 
because the judge had gave him an eight year sentence, but was trying to get let him get the drug court thing first. Why do you think he didn't show up for it? It seems like showing up for drug court would have been the smart thing to do. Why didn't he do that, do you think, Missy? Well, I was working full time and his dad was in and out of the hospital. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, you know, he would have to be there at a certain time, but it was also the same time I had to be at work. Mm-hmm. So he didn't have a car, he had no uh, transportation to get to, to court? Well, he had no driver's license, so mm-hmm. his dad wouldn't let him drive. Mm-hmm. I guess what I'm saying is that sounds like a pretty serious, you know, you, you know, if the alternative is going to jail, um, you know, you find a way, I think, to get to court if, instead of going to jail. But that's, I guess, that's not the choice he made. Well, and you got to remember, drug court, where we live, it's a half an hour away. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like even if I did try and take him, I'm missing an hour, hour and 15 minutes worth of work. You know, and where we live, there's not a lot of access to things. You've got to go to a whole other county Mm -hmm. here to get, you know, get like, like I said, with drug court, things like that. Mm -hmm. You've got to go to a whole different county. Okay. All right. Did you, do you think at the time when this happened, did you realize that if he didn't show up for drug court that he would get sent to jail? No, because, I mean, my kids were never in trouble, so I never knew, mm-hmm. like, how serious it was. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. So, he didn't show up for uh, this court-appointed date, whatever goes on there, and so he got sent to jail, and how long was he in there? Um, probably six or nine months. Wow. How How did he handle that? Um, I guess I was, because to be honest with you, I can remember the first time he went to jail, he had called me, he was a trustee in the kitchen, and he had called me and said, these people want me to join their gang, and I'm like, well, what do you want to do? He says, mom, I don't want to be in the gang, so then don't be in the gang. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I didn't even know gangs even existed around here, until Bernie on this. Okay. So he's in jail, uh, and we of course know that uh, gangs do exist in jail. It's a, actually it's an excellent recruiting place for uh, to pick up gang members, as we've uh, learned so well. We talk a, we talk some about gangs and gang affiliations and, and things. So this is what happened while uh, he was in jail. Um, he didn't want to join one, so he's in there six to eight nine months. He gets out. Um, what happens after he gets out? Does he have more problems with the law or what goes on in his life in his early 20s? Well, I mean, he was trying, you know, um, he was trying to work, you know, but like I said, in this small town, everybody's judged. If you don't have connections with somebody, it's an act of Congress to get a job. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, he was trying to work. It didn't matter, you know, if... He was doing little side jobs or whatever, but then he turned around and fell right back into the same old crew and went to back. That's quick and easy. Let's sell some drugs first before having a, a real truth. All right, so he went back to jail. Yep. And how many? Uh, how much of his uh, life did he spend in jail before he disappeared? How many? How many years or months? How many? How would we add that up? Well, if you got to remember, he had an eight-year sentence, so I would say probably six of those years he was in and out of jail. So he flat timed in January of last year. Wow. Would you yes. go see him in jail? How often would you go see him? Would his, uh, I guess one of his brothers oh, yeah. is deceased, but would his brother, or other brother, go see him or what? No, no, because normally on visitation, it was the day his brother had to work. So it was normally me and um, my grandkids would go see him. Okay. All right. So he's in jail, uh, in and out of jail, having some legal problems. And you said that the last time he was in jail, that he got out in January of 2019? Yes, sir. Okay. And how did he handle uh, that being out of uh, jail? What did he do? He come back and and lived with you. What did he do? Um, what 
time I had lost I had lost my place, so I was in a process of getting an apartment, but it wasn't gonna be ready till March. So he stayed with friends and family until uh we got the apartment and then he moved again. Okay. And how did that go? You being with him uh, again, you two living together, him not being in jail. How was it? It was good. I mean, because, you know, I mean, we cut up and, you know, did things that, like I said, you know, at least six of the years with him in and out of jail. So yeah. it was good to be able to spend time with him, be with him. Right. I'm sure. Okay. And so how do you, uh, what did he do? Did he, did he get a job or, I mean, we, you know, we... We realize that, you know, if you got out in early 2019, uh, seven months later, of course, is when he disappeared. What went on over those seven months? Um, well, I mean, he, like I said, he had somebody was doing him side jobs, and mm-hmm. he would do that to try and make money. But like I said, it, it fell right back into the same routine, get back with the old crowd, and here we go back to selling drugs again. Uh, would you say that you were worried that he was going to get caught and go back to jail again? Well, uh, I already knew he was going to get caught because he had went, um, well, he didn't get caught with drugs, but he had, as they call it on the streets, bones, he called them bubblers. He had uh, went to a hotel that he was not supposed to be on premises, and they, they caught him with the uh, the bone. And they was trying to charge him for all the water that was in it because it tested positive for meth. Okay. When, so, did, this, when did this happen, Missy? Do you remember um, what month? Not the exact date, but maybe the month of 2019? I know I was still working night shift, so that had to be been um, probably April because it was warm. April. Okay, so it was April 2019, and I have to ask, uh, did you ever try to talk to him? Hey, Brent, hey Brennan, you got to stop selling these drugs and everything. I mean, was that? Did you try to do that? Did that fall on deaf ears, or how would you explain it? Well, he had came. He well, we had talked about it, and because they were trying to get him to um, snitch on three people, if not, they was going to charge him for. Um, what was it? It was a serious, serious, like, drug half because so much water wow. tested positive for the meth. Wow. And I said, when he came to me, I said, Bernard, I said, what are you going to do? And he's like, Mom, he said, I guess I'm going back to prison. He said, because I'm not snitching with nobody. Okay. I have to ask, and, and did he have any, uh, being that not only was he dealing drugs, uh, was he a, an addict or... or as well, or what was um, it? He, he smoked marijuana. Okay. I'm not going to say he didn't smoke meth, so I mm. can't, I've never seen him do it, so mm. I'm not going to say yes or no. Okay. All right. And being that you had mentioned uh, this uh, gang issue that popped up when he was in uh, jail the first time, do you believe that these uh, interactions that he had in 2019 were gang related or not? Well, and that's that's the key question because just for the simple reason, um, like a lot of these people that he was friends with, that's in the gang, their words was that what they're hearing through their gang is that Brennan was just supposed to get a beat down because he put his hands on Taylor and it went too far. Well, we're not going to get into so theory. We're not going to, uh, Missy, we're not going to get into theories. All I'm asking you is. Right. Is there any proof that he was a member of a gang in this time between January of 2019 and when he disappeared? That's all I'm asking you. No, no. Okay. All right. So that's being that we, you'd brought it up when he was in jail. I thought that I need to ask you that. And once again, we're not going to get into uh, uh, theories in, in this in, in this discussion. We don't want to do that. Okay. So right. another uh, point is that did he have a girlfriend once he got out of jail? And and I have it in my notes here that she was in jail. Um, maybe you can tell the listeners about that situation. Um, Brennan was dating a girl named Rachel, and she was staying here with him. Well, she didn't report in, so 
he had gotten a flat tire on my car, and the cops had stopped to check on him. And when they ran her name is when they found out that uh, she had a warrant for her arrest for not reporting it. So she went to jail mm -hmm. until February, I think February of this year. And when did she you, heard, I mean, yeah, when did she go to jail? Um, I her birthdays, June 15th. So it was in the, at, closer to the end of June. So a little more than a month uh, before he disappeared. Right. Okay. All right. So Rachel's in jail. Uh, did he go see her in jail? Did he go see how she was doing in that month and a half before uh, he disappeared? Do you know? her because the policy, if you had been arrested, you couldn't visit somebody for six months. Oh. Huh. So he just that. make sure she had money on her books uh, for phone calls and uh, candy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I have to ask this. Being that Rachel was his girlfriend, do you think that uh, he was seeing other women while she was in jail? I'm not here to point anything out, but being the oh yeah, they they did because that that was their policy. If mm -hmm. if one went to jail and the other one was out, they had an agreement that they understood if the, you know one or the other needed to take care of me. Okay, all right. Let's move on to this. Uh, let's just talk about some people in general. Uh, we're not going to get into the specific uh, the specifics just as yet regarding uh, where they were at the time of Brennan's disappearance. But what can you just in general say about uh, Chris? Uh, who is he, and how well did Brennan know him? Um, Chris, one, when the first time I met him, I told Brennan I didn't like him. Just one, he was really young. And two, just by the way he presented himself, mm -hmm. I don't know, you just you get a vibe when you know you don't. There's something about somebody you don't know. Um, as far as how long, Brennan, to my knowledge, Brennan didn't know this kid well at all. Okay. To your knowledge. That's fine. That's that's all you know. That's all you know, Missy. That's fine. How long, when would you say that you first met Chris? You said you got this bad vibe from him. When did you meet him? Um, when we was living in an apartment, it wasn't long after we moved here. And he knocked on the door and I opened up the door. He pointed his finger like a gun, and he said, is Smokey there? Mm -hmm. And I slammed the door in his face, and I told Brennan, I said, I don't know who this kid is. I said, but he better get his facts and check before uh, I open the door, and he does it again. When was this? What, what month of what year was this that you first, when you met Chris? Um, I probably, well, it, great till was, till was still here, so it had to have been like in April, May. April, May of 2019. Yes. Okay. Uh, next person I want to ask you about is Dakota. Now, my understanding is there's some connection between one of Dakota's parents and your family or something, or, or what is that? My father-in-law was married to his mom, and then they got divorced. Your father-in-law was, ma father was married to Dakota's mother? Yes. Wow. Okay. But because they were divorced, she still carried the Bernal's last name, so that's how he became a Bernal. He's, he's not a true Bernal. Okay. And uh, Dakota, is that how, between your father-in-law and Dakota's mother, is that how Brennan and Dakota met, or did they meet some other way? They met some other way. Okay. And how, long, how did they meet, and how long did the two know each other, once again, to your knowledge? That's a good question because I have no clue. No idea. Okay. Did at any time before Brendan disappeared, did Dakota ever come over to your apartment, your house, your home? Nope, except for when we bailed him out of jail. Okay. And lastly, Kayla, who is she? Um, She was a girl who was at my house that night when Brendan and her got into an argument. She was moving out of a place that she was stuck over here, and I told her she couldn't leave it here because we have monthly inspections at our apartment. Mm hmm And had you you had never heard of her or seen her before? I 
yeah, well, yeah, Brandy's brought Kayla over a few times. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I didn't truly know her. Okay. All right. Any idea how they met? Uh, I'm just going to say by the crowd he hung with. Okay. All right. So we have Chris, uh, maybe from April and May. We Dakota. We really, uh, you, you really don't know. Uh, not sure about that. And only saw him once. And then Kayla, you'd seen her a few times, but never really met her. But you knew she was a girl that Brennan was hanging around with. Yeah, she stayed. She stayed here a few times. Okay. All right. So. Overall, let's just talk about the summer of 2019. Um, were you worried about Brennan? Uh, you've, you've mentioned that you know he was being asked to roll over on other people, snitch on other people. He's dealing drugs. How, how worried would you say you were about Brennan in the summer of 2019? Um, I really wasn't worried in the beginning, even when he said that you know he got caught with that bong and everything. I wasn't worried. Because, I mean, he he stayed laying low a lot. Mm -hmm. He didn't have transportation unless he used my car. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the same, it was always the same kids that always came to the house. Okay. All right. So you, uh, you, to once again, to your knowledge, looking back at the summer of 2019, to your knowledge, he wasn't having any beefs with anybody. Nobody threatening him uh, that you knew about anything like that. No. All right. Would you say that Brennan was a guy that most people got along with? Oh uh, no. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I've met people when he used to go to the casinos. I have met people since he's come up missing. Randomly messaged me and said, "Oh, I met your son at the casino, or oh, I met him mm. here." You know. Nobody, anybody I've ever talked to that, like, I really do not even know who's met him mm-hmm. has not, never said one bad word about him. Okay. Let's move up to that day, the disappearance date, July 24th, 2019. It was a Wednesday. Um, Brennan uh, is living with you at the time, and you, I guess you were somewhere. You come home. Why don't you explain what you remember about uh, the beginning into the afternoon of July 24th, 2019? All right. I was playing in school, and it's summertime. We work from 6.30 to 3. And I went to work, got home that afternoon, because like I said, we had inspection. And, you know, I told him, I said, you know, make, because he takes his globe off of his hand because – it's a frosted globe, so it makes it really dim in his room. I said, make sure you put your, your globe back on. And he's like, okay, so I'm going to do that right now. I went to work, come home that afternoon, was laid on the couch watching TV, and I must have dozed off because I woke up to Chris Browse. He doesn't have an inside voice. He talks really loud. <laughs> okay. And I woke up, and when I woke up and walked in the room, he had um, Chris and Caleb dead. Why don't you say that, you, uh, Missy? Out. Missy, why don't you say that again? You went out for just a moment. What, what did uh, what, what was Brennan doing to Chris and Kayla? He had when I walked in the room. He had both of them in a headlock and dropped them on the bed. And I grabbed Kayla and I told her get out the house. He's like, "Wait, well, I got to get Chris." And I said. Kayla, do not go in that room. I said, because mm-hmm. if he puts his hands on you, you bring it on yourself. So mm-hmm. she went outside, and I told Brendan and Chris that they need to leave while I was calling the law. And I walked outside. Well, Kayla went and got the call, and, and Chris and Brendan walked out. And he came to me, and he's like, Chris came to me and said, I'm sorry, Miss Smith, for the misunderstanding. I said, if you do, is never come back to my house, because if you do, I'm having the law called on you. Well, they left. Okay. I just need and to ask, uh, Missy, I just need to ask you a couple questions. So you come home. You're done with okay. work at 3. When you come home, are they already there, or is the house, your apartment, empty? No, it was just me and Brennan. Just you and Brennan. Okay. So Brennan, Brennan's there when you get home, just the two of you. You doze off. When you wake back up, Chris and Kayla are there. Right. 
Okay. And then you hear them, um, something's going on in the other room. You go in there, you see Brennan have each of them in a headlock and throws them down on the bed. Uh, was this something that they were just joking around or did was was it something serious? Well, I mean, after I get Kayla out, and then oh, uh, he had a friend in there, Justina, which who was kind of hovered in the corner because Brennan kept trying to hit Chris. And uh, Chris kept saying, Dead. you know, I'm like, ah, everybody else in the house right now, I'm calling Mm hmm. Okay. Do you know, uh, to this day, do you know what this this was all about? I can only go by what the story is on the street, Chris. No, we're not going to do it. We're not going to go by what's on the street. So Brennan never told you what it was about. Chris never told you what it was about. Kayla never told you what it was about. No, they left. All right, so none of them had any explanation before they left. Okay. But you, the way you look at it, when you walked in there, you thought it wasn't just a bunch of 20-somethings horsing around. You thought it was a serious fight. Yeah. Okay. All right, so they're there. You kick them out, um, and both of them in the headlocks. They, uh, You told them to leave. And what time was this about that day that they left? It was between five and six. Okay. It was any, still daylight. Okay. Any idea where they could have been going? Uh, did they say anything about, well, I guess we'll just go here, we'll just go there? Any idea where when they were leaving, where they were going? Nope. Nope, because like I said, when I told them I was calling the law, they all left. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So they leave, and uh, what transpires the way you remember it for the rest of the day? Just your We're not going to get into the chase and everything yet, but just your day for the rest of the day. What did you see? Uh, did you talk to anybody? Anything the rest of that day? Um, well, like I said, Bernie came back maybe 20, 30 minutes later. He walked in his bedroom. He grabbed his book bag. He said, I'll be back in a little while, Ma. And I said, okay, well, I never – thought not though because he's got a key to get into the house mm-hmm. and that night I go to bed I wake up the next morning I check his room he wasn't there didn't think nothing of it I figured you know let mom cool down I'll stay the night somewhere and then come back home okay well let and, me ask you, let me ask you this so Brandon comes back uh do you did you look outside to see who dropped him off do you even know it was it Chris was it anybody else did you see anybody else no, because I live in an apartment, so I live in the back, so I don't see okay. the parking lot. I know that, I know exactly how that can be. That's perfectly un- understandable. Okay. And Brennan comes in. He gets a couple things, his book bag, which we will talk about later. Uh, did he ever – so no explanation as to why he and Chris and Kayla were in that uh, fracas earlier. Never gave an explanation for that. No. Okay. Uh, did he seem okay? Did he seem happy? Any, any, your his demeanor when he came back, twenty minutes later. Oh yeah, you know, Brennan is bouncy. I okay. mean, he's always had to go lucky. Okay. You know, he can get an argument with you and be mad, and then twenty minutes later, like mm-hmm. nothing happened. So when he came in and got his book bag, mm-hmm. he walked in the room, got his book bag, and like I said, he's like, "I'll be back later, mom." You know, and then you know, bounce right back on out the house. Okay. Do you have any idea what – I'm guessing it wasn't books in this book bag. What do you believe was in the book bag? Well, I know I know it was a shirt or something hanging out of the book bag because I had said something to him about it because it looked like, you know, it's a possibility to fall out the book bag. Okay. All right. So he takes this bag um, that uh, – my understanding in talking to you before, Missy, is this bag was something he took a lot of places with him, right? Yes. Okay, so that makes sense. So he might have forgotten it before, being that you uh, kicked him and the other two out. You know, he didn't have an tr- opportunity to grab it. He came back. He f- probably figured, hey, he lives there with you, so he could go back in by himself and get that. No problem, and that's exactly what happened. But never let you know. Right. He said he would be coming back later, but he never let you – he didn't tell you where he was going. No. Okay. All right, so the rest of the, the go into the night, uh, I'm guessing you, did you work the next day? That would be a Thursday. Did you work the next day? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
All right, and what do you remember about that day? Do you remember being concerned about not hearing from Brennan? Anything? Well, I had, text, I had texted him, and I sent him a message on Messenger and tried to call, but, you know, the phone went to voicemail. So, like I said, I just figured he was somewhere and he was sleeping it off. Okay. Let mom cool down type thing. Okay. Seems uh, seems sensible. And In fact, maybe I should ask you this. I'm sure there were times that back after he got out of jail, was living with you for those seven months, that maybe he didn't stay over at your place. He was out with friends. Do you know some of those places that he would stay over when he wasn't at home? He would just, like, if, if he was staying somewhere, uh, messaging, like, hey, you coming home? And he's like, no, Mom, I'm, I'm at such and such house. But, you know, like I said, I've heard so so many names of streets. Mm hmm yeah, well, I'm just – all I'm asking you, Missy, in those times before, not the time he disappeared, but in the months before when he wouldn't be at your house, do you know where he would stay? No, that's what I'm saying. He just gave me names of streets. Okay, just names of streets. Okay, names yeah. of streets. Okay, I understand that now. I'm sorry, Miss. I'm just – he's staying on Smith Street. Well, he's well, no, 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 he knows I don't know all his friends. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So okay. he's just saying, oh, I'll be on this street or I'll be on this street. Okay, so he's going to be on Elm Street. He's going to be on Main Street. Right. He's going to be on Fourth Street, and that's all he would tell you. Wouldn't give you any person's names. John Smith, Jane Doe, nothing. Right. The rest of the people I I truly knew, no. Okay. All right. That's just how he handled his business. Okay. So you go to work. You don't hear from him. When do you start um, thinking maybe something isn't right? Friday. Friday. Well, let's talk about Friday. What, what – uh, you didn't hear from him. I'm guessing that's the reason you felt that way. Um, what did you do on Friday? Well, I went to work, and I started messaging a few friends that I knew I had on Facebook and asked, hey, has anybody talked to Brennan Steeny? You know, and was the same response that everybody knew. Mm -hmm. When I got off of work – because I posted on Facebook. No, I didn't even post. I think either Friday or Saturday. I'm not for sure. I'd have to go back and look. But it was either Friday or Saturday I posted, has anybody heard from me? Okay. And uh, when and I got off of work that day, mm -hmm. uh, I was going home, and uh, I was telling Paul, I said, you know, I'm really starting to get concerned, Mr. because there should be no reason that Brennan hasn't checked. I mean, even if Brennan's mad, he'll give me a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he'll respond one way or the other. Sure. And I told him, I said, I told Paul, I said, I think I might have to go file a report on Brennan. And I said, because this is not like him. Okay. And he got pulled over. All right, so what you're saying is you when you decided to – and this would have been on, once again, on Friday that you think this happened? Right. Okay. Right. All right, so July – I guess that would be then July 26th. Is, so July 24th is a Wednesday, so Friday would have been July 26th. Okay, and right. you decide – and I, I should ask you this. When you posted on media asking any of his friends if they had seen him, did any of them ever answer and say yes, no, any – any. Most of them said no, but like I said, I did have somebody come to the house and tell me that Brennan was in a high-speed chase late Thursday night, early Friday morning. Well, let's talk about it. Let's not, uh, let's not then gloss over that. So Friday – so you were saying before you went and filed this police report on Friday, somebody came over to your house on Thursday night, I guess early Friday morning. That's uh, Is this somebody you knew well that the person would just show up at your house so late? Well, the first it started with, I got a phone call one message, and I guess either my signal or their signal wasn't good, and I lost signal, and then that's when the girl, another girl pulled up because she had already told her about it, so she came to me and said she had heard that Brennan was in a high-speed chase and they got to a wreck. Wow. Did you believe that? At the time, no, until I got pulled over Friday. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And so, okay, so this woman, a uh, young woman, uh, tells you this. You're thinking it's just a, you know, a rumor or something, a vicious rumor. I guess you hadn't, and we have to remember that this chase happened on Wednesday, so it's over 24 hours later, and you didn't even right. hear anything about it until this one uh, woman tells you, and because you hadn't heard it from anybody else, you doubted it. And then you go to work on right. Friday, and you decide you're going to file a police report, and in the process of going to file a police report, you get pulled over. Why don't you talk about that? I got pulled over, and my window didn't roll down, so I had to open my door. And the cop asked for my ID and all. And I gave him my ID. So he was calling something in on the radio, and he asked me, he said, can I ask where you're going? And I said, well, if you need to know, I said, I'm going to file this report on my son. When he looked at my driver's license, he said, we're looking for your son. I said, then can you tell me what is going on? Mm -hmm. I, and I told him... With the girl, he come and told me that I was in a high speed chase and he got into a wreck. And he said, no, that's not what happened. He said, yes, they was in a chase, but they didn't wreck. The guy blew the motor up in the car, so they pulled over and they ran. Mm -hmm. And I said, how do you know it was my son? He said, because I seen him, he took off with no shoes and no shirts. Okay. So this police officer is telling you that. Um, allow me to ask you, do you think it's just a coincidence that you ran into this? I, I'm guessing that you weren't breaking the law, driving or anything, that he just randomly pulled you over? Do you think, I have to ask, do you think that this cop was looking for you? I think, well, because I knew Brennan drove my car. So I think because mm -hmm. they seen my car, they thought maybe Brennan might be in it. Right. That wouldn't make sense. Okay, uh, so when he was pulling you over, you had no idea why he was pulling you over until he told you that. Right. Uh, you were probably thinking, well, I wasn't speeding. I didn't go through a stop sign or a stoplight or, or anything like that. And then he, he comes and tells you uh, that. And it very well may be that he might have seen you behind the wheel and thought maybe you were covering for your son. Maybe he was in the back seat or something, you know, all hunkered down. Right. Which I have to tell you, uh, we run into a lot of disappearances where parents do cover up for their children. So that's not completely right. crazy. So do you continue to the police department to file a report? What do you do after this stop? Well, then he, that's when he tells me that Brennan ran. So then I'm like, okay, well, then he's hiding somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I didn't file the report until Monday. Oh, okay. Because I figured he was hiding. Because he ran. Yeah. And then I know Brennan well enough. He'll give somebody a call, see what his charges are. And if it's nothing serious, then he's already going to make sure he's got money rounded up so he can come right back out of jail. Okay. So at what point, uh, being that, what happened after you got this stop? Did you just turn around and go home? Did you start calling other people to see if they've heard about this car chase? What did you do? After this police stop? Um, afterwards, I went home and, like I said, I still kept messaging him and everything because, like I said, I know him well enough. Mm -hmm. He's going to pick up the phone and sit there and say, hey, mom, you know, we got into a high speed chase, whatever. You know, I'm hiding out so I can find out what my charge is going to be. But he still wasn't. Answering nobody. So Saturday, I posted on Facebook again about Brennan. And still, nobody had heard from him, nobody had seen him. Mm -hmm. And my son, uh, Brandon, calls me like, Mom, what's going on? And I told him. Well, I get a message. Well, my son started calling the hospitals and things like that just to see. And nobody had had him. And, well, then, late Saturday night, somebody had messaged me, because still, nobody had told me where the high-speed chase had taken place or mm -hmm. anything like that. All right. And, in, and if I could just jump in here, in fact, you didn't even know who he was with. Did the names Dakota and Chris ever pop up, like with this police officer or anybody else early on? No. Okay. No. Okay. All right, so you're into Saturday. 
You still don't know the particulars, and we will eventually talk about the particulars of this chase, but at that time, Saturday night, so this is three days after the chase happened, you still didn't know the details of it, and what were you doing? Um, actually, I had a parent who, um, her son was a cop, and he was talking to her on her way home, and he's like, Mom, remember the high speed chase I was telling you about? And she's like, yeah. And she's like, well, this is where it happened. She's the one who messaged me and told me about where it ended. So then that's when I got with my son and just a few people, because we're just, in the back of our minds, we're thinking he's hurt. So mm-hmm. we go to, uh, I'll meet up, and while we're waiting to meet up is when um, the guy, Brandon Powell, had recorded it. So then we know exactly where we was going. Okay. Yes, and I will, by this time, the listeners are, we're doing, by the way, we're doing this interview on October 27th, uh, 2020. This is airing on October 30th, 2020, but in the meantime, I will have posted a link to this video. It's, I should warn listeners, if they haven't seen it yet, it's very blurry. Uh, it's not high quality, but that's the video you're talking about, Missy, correct? Yes. Okay. All right, so somebody was driving by the end of this chase and videoed it. So... You got to see that video. When was it that you actually found out all of the details, where it started, who was involved, and everything else, and why it even happened? Uh, I well, to, it wasn't until the following, the following week when people started coming over and telling. Like I said, we watched the video, mm-hmm. but Chris and Dakota both went to jail. Right. So I still didn't truly know the whole details of any of it until the following week. So the police, you went and you said you went and filed a report on Monday. Even when you filed this report, the police did not give you the details of the chase that they were involved in. No, nope, all he said was they filed a report, they'll do a bolo, and that they just think Brennan was just hot. Okay. All right, and you were you were in, and it's not crazy for them to think that because you were thinking that too. Right. You were thinking, oh, he got in this, he got in this chase, and now he's afraid, and and whatever else. And that I think that makes a lot of sense, both on your part on and on the police's part, because that does that happens a lot of times. People get in police chases, they get away, and they lie low for a while. Okay. Right. Um, but you did file this report. And um, let's just get right to the details of uh, what is your now understanding in on October of 2020 as to um, how the chase got started, how long was it, et cetera. Why don't you give that to the listeners right now? What do you know about the chase now? The only thing I can, like I said, I truly don't know is that – they left Sunflower and that they had passed this one cop up. They were taking the back way uh, to bring Brennan back to Ladova because supposedly he left his phone there. And the one cop who blue-lighted uh, Chris, who was driving, knew Chris didn't have a driver's license or anything, so he blue-lighted him, and all of a sudden the chase mm-hmm. took place. And you, when you say Sunflower, that's a street, Correct. Yes. Okay. We just want. It's not a, like if you say sunflower. Is that a club? Is that a bar? What is that? Is it? Oh, a, yeah, is it sure. You know, it's a it's a street in in Delisle, right. Mississippi. No. Oh. Sun. Sunflower. Sunflower Street is is in Bay St. Louis. Okay. All right. Just one. We want to make sure we get these things right. Once again, where is Sunflower Street? It's in Bayside in uh, Bay St. Louis. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's where uh, they were, allegedly. And then this cop sees Chris driving, knows Chris, and Chris, the guy that was just at your uh, house with Brennan and uh, Kayla a couple hours before that, um, that evening, that Wednesday evening, July 24th, they go by this cop, he blue lights and the chase starts. And so they take off. And how long is the chase? How far is it from to your knowledge, from where this cops tried to pull them over to where the chase ended? 
How far? How many miles? How long did it last? Do you know? Um, at least a good 15, 20 minutes. Wow, a, good, a long one then. Okay. All right. And the police ended up telling you, and we'll get into the particulars, and I've already, already forecasted this, but uh, the the car blew up. Uh, Chris tries to run. He gets caught. Uh, Dakota doesn't try to run, and the third person, who is allegedly Brennan, runs off not caught. Right. right? Okay. So do you know after this search happened, once again, what you found out, did the police really try to look for whoever this third person was, presumably Brennan? Um, did they go into the woods by where this highway, where the car blew up? Did they do any helicopter searches, dogs, anything to your knowledge? No, um, the cop, the one cop I did talk to said that it was really thick and it was really hard for them to go into the woods. There's been no searches except for family and friends, mm -hmm. no dogs, no helicopters, none of that. Okay, so to this day, so once again, July 24th to October 27th, really no searches except for, like you're saying, you getting friends and family together to go out there and try to find any sign of Brennan. Yes. Okay. All right. So we have this chase. It happened. Uh, two guys get caught. And the only reason we think that Brendan was in the in the vehicle is because why? Chris and Dakota told the cops that it was Brennan. And it was Brennan. Okay. All right. So other than that, we're just going on these two guys' words. Right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. And did the police, to your knowledge, at the time in July 2019, did the police believe these two? Yes, that's what they told me, that this okay. is what Chris and Dakota said and that it was Brennan in the car. Okay. Now, let's uh, – we don't usually like to do rumors or anything else, but we are going to offer some evidence uh, eventually that maybe it wasn't Brennan. Uh, when did you – start hearing that maybe it wasn't Brennan in that car? When? Um, Can you remember? I don't know. Well, the, key, what, what, the thing was, was I had two cops tell me Brennan took off in the woods with no shoes and no shirt. Mm -hmm. So when we got the video, and like I said, my son and daughter-in-law was going on the iPad and going frame by frame. So when I talked to the investigator, I said, look, I said, Here's a video. Is there any way y'all can clean it up? I know it's not good footage. I said, but is there any way you can clean it up? I said, because I just want to see my son's back because Dakota said Brennan jumped over the hood of the car. I said, I know what's tattooed on his back. And then that's when the investigator said, oh, he didn't have a shirt on, so Dakota threw him a shirt. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay. I said, then I pulled up the frames that my son and him had done. I said, okay, so now he has a shirt on. I said, but you, I've got two officers who told me that he took off in the woods with no shoes and no shirt. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. I pulled up a picture of the guy's head. I said, if this is a true person's head, and I know blowing it up will distort it more. I said, Brennan hadn't had a haircut in a month. I said, this kid looks like he's got a fresh haircut. And so, after that, everything kind of went, you mm -hmm. know, Brennan didn't wear a hat. Brennan mm -hmm. wore fishing hat or like beanie. Well, I guess my question is, Missy, is I've seen this video that is on YouTube, and it is fairly blurry. I don't know how you'd be able to tell anything from that video. Or is there another video that I've not seen? No, just the one that Brennan held it. Okay. Because... Uh, you really, it's really hard. I mean, uh, the listeners will see it for themselves. They'll get determined for themselves. But for myself, it is somewhat blurry. You can see somebody running from the car, but I would be, I, it could almost be me in that video. I'm a white guy too. So um, it's it's a little hard for me, but you're saying that somebody was able to clean it up and look at it closer or something? They cleaned it up. Well, yeah, they cleaned it up a little bit, but it wasn't. I mean, they don't have the technology mm -hmm. to really clean it up. That's why I brought it to the investigators. Since yeah. 
you know, they're saying that they have better technology, so that's what I asked them, could they clean it up? Because what they've done, you know, it's it's still grainy. Okay, it is. All right, and we I just want to remind the listeners, when did you first hear this? That maybe you started thinking that it wasn't being that the cop told you it was Brennan in the car on Friday. How long later did you begin thinking maybe it wasn't Brennan in the car? Um, after, like I said, after they 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 cleaned up the video, mm-hmm. like I said, it wasn't by much. I kept telling them, I said, "There's no way that was Brennan." Okay. How long? How long was that? A week later? A month later? Do you remember? Um, it was about about three three or four weeks. All right, so it was fairly long. Okay. All right, so let's talk about, uh, let's get into some of these things a little bit more uh, detail. We've already talked about searches uh, that were done. Um, Cops didn't do much. Uh, Maybe thinking that whoever ran off um, might pop up anyway. Uh, You've gone out there with friends and family, looking around, um, haven't found any signs, of course, of course not of anybody's remains, let alone Brennan's, and no signs of any... Adult activity out there, human activity in, in the woods there. But once again, Chris and Dakota, once they were caught, uh, they said that Brennan was in the vehicle. However, you had told me about maybe this is what you were referencing before, but I want to talk about it uh, explicitly now. Uh, there was a witness who gave a description of the person who ran off that does not match Brennan. Why don't you explain that? When, when he got off the interstate, there was a car sitting on the side of the road, and that what he had seen did not look like Brennan at all. He did not have the tattoos like Brennan had, and so forth on that mm-hmm. line. Yeah, and if anybody and seen, I asked him, could he describe the car? And he said, no. All he knew was it was a white, like sporty car. He couldn't tell me like if it was an Acura mm-hmm. or you know whatever mm-hmm. sporty cars are. And was it white? Was that was it a white car? I can only go by what he said. Okay, so you don't know. I knew there was a, I knew there was a couple of his friends who did have white cars. So that's why in the beginning I kind of played a possibility that oh, if he was running and he had somebody going to meet him, mm-hmm. that would be common sense. Okay. All right. Um... But this person, and, and if anybody's saying, I will have posted at least a couple of pictures of Brendan before this episode comes out, uh, tattooed a lot. In fact, he has his last name tattooed across his chest. Correct. Right. All right. So he has a lot of tattoos front and back. So for a witness to say that not, you know, doesn't remember tattoos and maybe the hair isn't correct uh, does raise um, some suspicions. But you're, what you're saying is this witness – was just a regular person in a car driving there, just happened upon the scene that day. Right. Okay. All right. Now, what's also important to this, though, and it's the reason I've mentioned it before this interview even started in this episode, is that Chris, who was driving the car, and it wasn't his car, it was, I guess, his girlfriend's car, he actually ended up changing his story regarding Brennan being in the car, didn't he? When did he do to this? a couple of people. When did he do this? Uh, well, he's, let's see, he stayed in jail. Like I said, we bonded Dakota out because of what he told his mom. And so Chris probably, Chris probably got out about two months later. All right. Okay, and, and so Chris gets out, and who does he say... Um, who does he tell this to that he's changing his story? It's not Brennan in the car. It was somebody else. Who did he say this to? Well, like I said, he's, he's told a couple of people. He's told, um, a girl named Sunny, told a girl named Denise. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think because like I said, um, okay, I so got stolen out of my house. That's all right. So. He, after he gets out, he, he changes his story. At the time that when he was caught during the chase, he said it was Brennan Smokey, and that's what Dakota right. said. But then sometime later, 
he changes his story and says that a guy, and I'll just say his name, Sean Bilbo was in the car instead. Right. Did you ever get to talk to Chris about the chase that day? Not the chase itself. Okay, would he Just not? And would he not talk about that? He wouldn't say nothing. He just said that. I mean, he just he rambled. Okay. And but being that he changed his story, did you ever have a chance to ask him about the changing of his story? Yes, and that's when, like I said, that's when he told me about a white car. Okay, what I I. I I'm just wondering, did he ever change, admit that he changed his story to somebody else being in the car? Did he ever say to you, you know what, uh, Brennan wasn't in the car that day during the chase, somebody else? Did he Was he ever that explicit? Not to me. Okay, but he was to other people. But to you, it seems to, it sounds to me like he didn't want to talk about it. Right. Okay. Did he ever say to you... Uh, Sean Bilbo was in the car. No. Okay. That's all I'm. That's all I. That's all I want to cover here. So, he changed his story with other people, but then when he talked to you, he didn't want to talk about it. He wouldn't just be as explicit as he was with other people. Okay. And I realize. Right. And I, I, you know, and I realize you, you know, you have these other things going on about a white car and everything. I just don't want to get into that because that can't be proven. All right, I don't know what to make right. of that. I don't want to confuse the listeners about all this. All I'm trying to determine is, was it in, Brennan in the vehicle or not? He said it was originally, then he seemingly allegedly changed his mind. Did Dakota ever change his story about Brennan being in the car? Has he ever changed his mind? Dakota, he doesn't talk to me. Okay. But you haven't heard anything through the grapevine in the last year and some months that Dakota has changed his story about Brennan being in the car. Dakota just keeps saying the same thing that Brennan was in it. Okay. All right. So he's sticking to his story from that day. All right. Now, we do have to, though, talk about the car and what was found in it. And first of all, I want to talk about Brennan's shoes. I mean, somebody said that he ran off, no shirt, new sho no shoes, but Brennan's shoes were found near the car. Where were they? Please explain. Um, his shoes were or from the video, it looks like Brennan's going towards DeLille, all right? But we found the shoes like he was going back towards Bay St. Louis. Okay. And uh, are you sure that they are his shoes? Yes. All right. Uh, and were they just lying on the side of the road? Were they thrown off into the woods? I mean, what? how would you explain it? The way my brother-in-law found them was like, he just stood there, took his shoes off, and jumped in the woods. It wasn't like he was running out of his shoes. Mm -hmm. He said they were like, like he literally stopped and took his shoes off. Okay. He, because he was wearing fly. Okay. So what you're saying is the video shows, and and I just have to ask you something. Once again, being that I've seen the video, are we sure that in that video that isn't Chris running and not Brennan? I just have to ask. We know that Dakota didn't run. He stayed in the car. Chris did run but got caught. Are we sure in that video that it's not Chris running? Chris was the one that was running and uh, the cop caught him. Mm -hmm. Dakota told the cops that Brennan jumped over the hood of the car mm -hmm. and went into the woods. All right, but once again, because are we the sure? Second cop, the second cop is the one, because Dakota didn't run, mm -hmm. he went and got him. Right. All, all I'm asking you is, in that video, are we sure that the person who is very blurry in that video isn't Chris? It's it's not Chris and not Brennan. No, because you can see Chris running because Chris was wearing a white shirt. Okay. All right. Just wanted to ask you that. So back to Brennan's shoes. So what your understanding is, Brennan ran, ran one direction and his shoes were in another direction. Right. Okay. All right, so the shoes were found. Uh, any right reason that the police didn't get them, that they didn't pick those up, or, or what? Any thoughts on that? No, because, uh, like I said, the, the weekend before, when we found out exactly where mm -hmm. we went out there, 
And they're sitting there on the outside of the woods, so it didn't make no sense how we would have missed them. Because we one of uh, Chris Browse's shoes, we found his hat, and uh, we found a picture, which that was the following week. But the first weekend, it was we found Chris's hat, one of his shoes, and um, a cell phone. Okay. The second weekend was when Brennan's shoes was there. Huh. All right. That is weird. Let's talk about Brennan's phone. Was it in the car? From what the cops tell me, yes. All right, but you haven't seen the phone? Nope. Okay. So they believe that they found Brennan's. Now, was this Brennan's phone or was it his girlfriend's phone? Whose phone was it that Brennan was using? The phone at work was Brennan's girlfriend's. But Brennan had a phone, but he didn't have time on it mm-hmm. because he hadn't went and bought a phone card. Okay. So this phone that was found in the car, was it Brennan's phone or was it Rachel's phone? I don't know because they both had the same exact phone. And mm-hmm. I've never seen the phone, so, so I can't. It. Brennan had a crack in his phone. Okay, so you haven't seen it. But they didn't say they found two phones. They only found one phone. So am I to then understand that one of the phones is still missing? Yes. Okay. That's interesting, too. So maybe Brennan ran off with it. Maybe he left it somewhere. Um, and uh, being that the police still have it, is that am I then to understand that uh, – is Rachel still in jail? I don't even know. If it was Rachel's, wouldn't they give it back to her? Do, do you know anything about – concerning any Rachel got Rachel got out in February, and they never gave her the phone. Okay. She's never even seen the phone. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right. Regarding whatever phone that is, though, you had told me so something, uh, no records from it at all. To you, Once again, to your knowledge, you've never seen any phone records regarding that phone or any other phone for Brennan's disappearance? Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. No. However, you did tell me about a call on that happened over Messenger after Brennan, after this chase occurred. Why don't you tell the right. listeners about that? Please explain. Okay. Um, when I finally got into Brennan's Facebook and Messenger, and I started checking, and you could see where all the messages everybody was sending him was not being read. Mm-hmm. But at 2, it was like 2.39 in the morning, somebody had used Brennan's phone on Messenger and called somebody which I messaged the lady and asked her, does she, and I sent her a picture of my son and asked her, does she remember talking to him? And she said no. That okay. she didn't know who he was. Huh. So when you say two something in the morning, do you mean the very next morning? Do you mean like July 25th, the Thursday? Yes. So just maybe six hours after the, the chase, roughly? Correct. Okay. Yes. And uh, who is this person? You can name her name. Who is she? I don't know. I mean, I haven't been in his messenger since. Okay. Uh, so she's saying that somebody called her in messenger and not connected to Brennan in any way, to your knowledge at all. Right. Okay. Do you even know how long this – does it even say? I don't even know. I usually don't use messenger for calls, but – do you even know how long this this call was? No, I don't. Huh. All right. And she said she had no idea who Brandon was, and she did she even remember getting the call? No. But like I said, when I finally got into his messenger, mm-hmm. I had sent her a message through my phone, but we were friends, so... Yeah. She didn't respond back to me until a couple months later. Okay. Is she a, a person that lives in the uh, area of where the chase happened, or do you even know? Uh, she lives in you – no, know, she lives in Gupport. The wheel is, like, still another 15 uh, – from the wheel to Gupport, depending on what part, good another 10, 15 minutes. Okay. So what you're saying is as of October 2020 – you still can't reconcile reconcile how this woman was called 
on Messenger through Brennan's account six six hours after he allegedly disappeared after this chase. Correct. Okay. Do you know if the police have looked into this at all? I've asked them. I've told them, but they're not. Like I said, ever since I've, I've kind of called them out on that video mm-hmm. and about shifting me the phone, see if it's Shirley Brennan's or Rachel's. Things have kind of died down and hush hush. They don't tell me a lot because mm-hmm. I was going up there every week for an update. Yeah, I bet. All right, so just hard to explain if Brandon was in the vehicle, even if he wasn't in the vehicle. It's hard to explain the six hours that, you know, this woman gets called through Messenger and she doesn't remember the call and she doesn't know Brennan and she's just saying she doesn't know anything. Right. Okay. Now let's move on to this, the backpack. You had mentioned that 20 minutes after um Brennan and the two others left your house. He came back to get that backpack. Has the backpack ever been found? No. Um, so it wasn't found in the car. I guess it wasn't found in any searches. Uh nothing like that at all. No. On this video, um, has anybody ever stated that when they saw Brennan running off that he was carrying a backpack? No. All right. So somehow that backpack disappeared between him getting it from your house and him disappearing. Correct. It's, okay. All right. Never been found. And uh, you had given the impression that maybe some clothes or something would have been in it. Uh, could have another phone been in there. Any any idea what else could have been in this backpack? Like I said, it wasn't much in the backpack because, I mean, it was unzipped, and, yeah, it's a possibility there was another phone in there, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't like it was, you know, filled up. Mm -hmm. Because it was still left unzipped when he walked out the room. Okay. All right, so the backpack, not only is Brennan missing, but his backpack is missing as well. Even though his shoes, a phone was found that they believe to be Brennan's, this backpack not been found. We can't forget about the uh, young woman in, in kind of possibly involved in this, and that was Kayla, who was over your house the very day the chase happened. Um, she was at your house that day. What does she say happened after leaving your house that day. What has she said? The couple of times I did talk to her, uh, she said was um, they dropped her off on Ocean Street in Bay St. Louis, and um, that was the last time she saw That was the last time she saw Brennan. She doesn't know anything past that. Correct. Okay. Um, now, though, you told me that three weeks later, though, she appears at your place, and what? Does, why is she there? Well, she's laying in the train by in the beginning, just to see what's going on, have we heard anything, things like that. And then the last time she came, um, she had asked me if we could have something of Brennan's to remember him by. So Kayla's acting like Brennan is deceased, and what and what was your response to that? Well, when she asked me if she could have something of Brennan's to remember him by, I'm like. Why would you ask me something like that? Nobody said that, you know, he's not here anymore. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I just want something to remember him by. I'm like, no, nobody gets nothing to hit. Did you ask her, why do you even think that Brennan is deceased? I mean, how how long did this conversation go on? Uh, did she seem uncomfortable regarding the conversation? What do you remember about it? Um, well, the guys are over. He came up to me after she asked, and then he tried to get up in the, I, I say get up in the business and saying, um, you know, who he was and that, um, you know, if I needed anything. And I'm like, well, I need you to take her away. I said, because why is she going to ask me about having something to him or by when nobody said he's dead? Right. Did she, uh, is that the last time you spoke to Kayla? Yes. To your knowledge, in the last year and some months, 
um, as she ever voiced her own theory as to what could have happened to Brennan. Um, Back through the through the grapevine, once again, I don't want to hear just theories from the streets. Her specifically, to your knowledge, has he ever voiced an opinion on what happened to Brennan to anybody? To my knowledge, like I said, this is uh, a girl that she says is like her daughter that raised when she came to my house just a couple months ago, about two months ago, and she didn't tell me. She just told um, my nephew that the best thing for us to do is quit looking for Brennan. But mm. see, she was living with Kayla at one point. Okay. All right. I don't know what to think about that. That's certainly weird. Three weeks later, coming over, acting like Brennan is deceased, as if she knows something that happened, but she's never voiced anything or, you know... Okay. Right. Just don't know. Now we mentioned Sean Bilbo. I think we need to talk about him at least a little bit. Uh who is he? And does and I should ask you this. Does he fit the general description of what people have explained of a guy running off that, you know, being that uh do Sean and Brennan look alike? Do they look different? Sean and Sean and Brennan, if you put them, especially when they both have their hair cut and everything else, if you put them pictures next to one another, or even if you used to see them, unless you absolutely see their faces, you can mistake one for the other. Wow. Okay. But Sean does not have the tattoos that Brennan does? No, where's no tattoos. Okay. Um, has Sean Bilbo, to, to your knowledge, uh, ever, offer, ever offered up whether he was actually in that car that day and Brennan wasn't? No, um, when he finally got out of jail, uh, he had messaged me and my son wanting to talk and try and help find Brennan and gave us a phone number. And I tried to call him for him to come over, and he, he won't come over. He's come over in the beginning three times, but that's when I worked night shift. And then he tried to get me in the Bayside to go pick him up so we could talk. And I told him I refused to go in the Bayside. Right. Don't do that. Huh. All right. So he's not said yes, he's not said no regarding all of this. Correct. Right. Okay. Do you, do you did uh, Brennan and Sean know each other? Yes. They served jail time together. Okay. Actually, his, Sean's mother and... Me were good friends when she had her first kid, and even when she had a daughter, then she had Sean. And we were all friends, and they all went, Brennan and Sean went to school together. Okay. At some point, so like I said, served jail time together. Any, once again, to your knowledge, Sean and Brennan ever have any beefs between each other? Brennan, though. I don't think it's so much deep. Brennan just didn't like Sean by the way, the way Sean is. Mm -hmm. Sean was one for sneaking people, and Brennan wasn't about that. Okay. Can you think of any reason why at least Chris, I guess, would change his story and go from Brennan being in the car to Sean being in the car, being the way you know Sean, and would, any reason why Chris would pick Sean out unless it was true? That's the only thing I can come up with because, like I said, everybody does a lot of talking, and mm -hmm. a lot of people are scared. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we're not sure uh, why Chris would pick, suddenly change his mind and pick Sean out and change his mind moving from Brennan to Sean. Uh, do you even know if the police have even looked into this allegation at all to even determine if Sean had an alibi during the course of the chase that evening? Do you even know that? I know when Sean went to jail, they did um, they did talk with him. They did a uh, voice analog. Mm -hmm. And they just said that if they could, if they could charge him with murder, they would have done charge him. That's how bad, that's how it failed. That's how bad he failed it. Okay. So we just, uh, once again, we just don't know. There's some reasons, I think, here to believe that Brennan was in the car, given that his shoes were there, the phone's there, 
uh, being that he, that he was last seen with the two that were in the car. On the other hand, the description, some other things maybe, uh, on the other hand, don't fall in line. Now, you told me about something, and we're going to get to a couple other uh, point, um, other issues, but right before we started this conversation, you had told me about a person who just on uh, two days ago um, told you something about uh, that day of the chase. What did this person say? This person had some knowledge about seeing Brennan with, with Dakota and Chris. Why don't you pass that along to the listeners? Um, the alternator had went out on my car last year, and the guy's a mechanic, and he said he would fix my car. Well, to find out, a brand new alternator was three hundred dollars, and he said he could get me a used one for forty. Mm-hmm. So he got me a used one, but the cap on my alternator and the cap on the other alternator were wrong, so he had to take that cap off of my alternator and put on the other one. Uh, he said that when Burning them left, he was still here. They turned around and they came and picked him up so he could go back to his house so all his other tools were so he could change the cap on the alternator and that after they picked him up, that when they came back, they had already dropped Kayla off. It was just him and Brennan. They took Brennan to Huron Street Got him off so he could go talk to somebody. Chris and Jerry left, and he wanted to go pick up Dakota. But Chris couldn't go knock on the door because Dakota's mom didn't like Chris. So Jerry went and knocked on the door, and nobody answered. They left, went to the store, and decided to ride back by there one more time to see if he could get Dakota to ride with him. Mm -hmm. And that's... That's, and, how, that's how Dakota got picked up? Yes. All right, and then this guy got dropped off? He got dropped off. They they went and picked Brennan back up, and then they dropped him off so he could change the top from the alternator. Did this guy ever say where where Brennan was dropped off for that short period of time? Uh, off of Avenue B on Strong Street in Bay St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And well, the person I I, mean, I don't need an address. I'm just wondering who lives at that house. Who who lives it there? That was the girl who called me that night on Messenger, trying to tell me about the high speed chase, and I lost signal with her. So Brennan was dropped off at the house of a woman who later told you that he was involved in the chase. That told you that Thursday night, Friday morning. Well, she was trying to tell me, but we lost signal, and that's mm -hmm. when his other, friend, his other friend, mm -hmm. Shannon, came and told me what she had heard. All right. So your understanding is this guy's working on your car, goes with Chris, goes with Brennan. Brennan gets dropped off somewhere. They try to pick Dakota up once, unsuccessful. They come back later, get Brennan. Then Dakota is there. Then they pick up Brennan again, and then they drop this guy off. Correct. Okay. Is there any reason that this guy waited all this time to tell you? He went to jail not long after this took place. Did he ever finish working on your car? Yes, he did fix it because I had paid him the following morning. Is there a reason you think that he didn't tell you about all of this at the time that you paid him back last year? Because we didn't know Bruno was missing. Didn't know that yet. Okay. Didn't say, oh, yeah, I just was cruising around with your son the night before. Never brought it up. No, because he, he tried to get in touch with me that night and wanted to know if Brennan was going to be up, that he was going to come and put the alternator on that night. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know if he left with Chris. And I said, so I don't know if he's coming back or not. And he said, well, can you leave it unlocked, and I'll go ahead and put the alternator on for you, and then I'll just collect the money from you in the morning or from Brennan. And mm -hmm. I said, sure. So he fixed my car, so that morning when I got up, my car was, you know, I could get in my car and crank and leave here to work. Mm -hmm. But are you then saying that he didn't know about the chase, and he went to jail so quickly that he was in jail before the, the um, information about Brennan's chase came out? Right. Yeah, because it was a couple of days later, because I paid him... 
I've given Vicky my car. He came that day after I got off work. I paid him to work on the car. And then, like mm-hmm. I said, we still didn't know Brennan was missing. Mm-hmm. I just figured he was mad, so let mom cool down, and then I'll go back home. And then it was like a day, day or two later, Jerry went to jail, and then, like I said, he stayed in there probably for six months. What did he go to jail for? I think tickets in court, uh, contempt of court. Okay. But the last, still, the last time, though, he saw Brandon, he was with Chris in Dakota. Correct. All right, but he's saying that at some point Brandon got dropped at this woman's house. Uh, I just have to ask you, could this have been for some uh, sexual rendezvous or something? I don't know. He just said that all he knew was running me to go by um, by, by uh, Brandy and Tiffany's house, and that uh, they dropped him off, and he went inside to go talk to her, and then they left mm. and went to go try and get Dakota, and they went to the store now. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds like a uh, sounds like something some type of booty call to me, but I could be wrong. Okay, and, and I and I the listeners should know I'm not sure what to make of this guy's story overall. But if right. it's true, that if it's true, then that's what it sounds like to me. Brennan was doing, but I have doubts about the entire story. Just want the listeners to know. Okay, right. let's uh, let's move on to this. There is a recording on online right now, and it's part of. Uh, some I don't know how this person got a hold of this recording, but it is on a YouTube channel. Um, but it involves some women talking about Brennan's quote unquote murder. When did you first hear this recording? When did you find out about it? What can you say about it? Um, well, the recording actually uh, a girl named Lisa who loves to record everybody so she can use to her vein at things thing. And that uh, um, a lady had ran across it when she was using her phone and had called and said that um, I might want to come to this recording and it might help towards Brandon's case. This was a few months later. Mm-hmm. And there was some, the three that I could, only one was about saying that they, there was some jury in a bowl that they needed to get rid of that belonged to Smokey. The uh, other recording I never got, she said, but she didn't exactly tell me, but she said that it named somebody who played in Brennan's death. But she couldn't get the recording because the girl mm-hmm. came back before she could get Bluetooth to her phone. So what you're saying is this recording was happened upon by accident? Correct. Or the person... So Lisa is the one that made this recording. She's having a conversation with, the way I remember it, two other women. And then she has this on her right. phone, and then she loans her phone to somebody else, and this other person comes across the recording on her phone. Correct. Okay. Um, you you say that this woman, Lisa, has a history of trying to record people? Yes. Okay. Anybody who can ask about her, that's the first thing they're going to say. She records everybody's conversation. So if it's anything that can help her and when she gets in trouble, mm-hmm. she she plays that card. All right. Okay. I, I Okay. Uh, have you ever spoken to Lisa or any of the other women in the recording about this conversation they had? Uh, well, me and Lisa got into an argument on the phone. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, Chat, the other one that was in in the conversation, she just she was on the phone with her boyfriend at the time that the uh, Dave, if you call him Blue, she was on the phone with him because he's been in jail for a good minute. He's got a bunch of charges on him, so also you can hear in the background where she's also talking to Danny, and that's the one that that guy Gary to clear his name, saying that Brennan, uh, Jer- uh, Danny was at Ladoga when Brennan left. And what's what's that? Chad, what, it, what's, says, what is this? Badoga? What is that? It's another street. Okay. <laughs> okay. A lot of streets. Okay. So these women yeah. are talking about it. She's getting them on a recording. 
Um, this other woman happens upon it. Do you know uh, – you didn't hear about this recording until a couple months later, so let's say October of 2019? Uh, I want to say, yeah, October because uh, her got into it right before Thanksgiving. Okay. Do you know when this recording was made? I don't. Okay. Do you know the other – do you know any – so you got into an argument uh, with Lisa. What was the argument about? Because she called my my house uh, – called my phone wanting somebody had stole her car, and she was trying to say that uh, we had her kids' birth certificates and Social Security cards. And I'm like, I don't have none of that stuff here, which I know her dating called her dating. And told him what was going on. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Missy, he says, you know we've been raising the kids. But I understand that. I said, but why is she calling me asking for birth certificates and social security cards when somebody stole her car? And, you know, I mean, I knew the people, but they, they didn't bring none of that stuff over to my house. You didn't steal the car, correct, Missy? <laughs> no, I did not steal the car. <laughs> okay. All right. But she's a, she's kind of accusing you of doing it, though. Right. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I know that this recording got a lot of play once again on this other YouTube channel. Um, do you even know how that YouTube channel even got the recording? No clue. No clue. Okay. All right. Uh, I will link to it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to link to it if the listeners – I hate giving what I think are not very good YouTube channels any attention, but – that's the only place online that uh, I guess the. Uh, do you have a recording of it yourself, Missy? On your Which own. Which one? Uh, the one that's on the YouTube channel that I've heard. Anonymous. Yeah, that one. Yes, we'll get into that in a second. Yes. Yes. <laughs> do you have that? Because uh, I really, I, I'm going to be just honest. I don't want to link to that other person's program. Do you just have that All recording right. on your own? No, actually, they're the one who contacted me and was digging and asked me if I had the recording. Now, how they got it, I don't know. Okay. All right, so I'm going to have to do a little um, thinking about that. Okay, so there's this recording. It's out there. I'm not sure what to make of it. It seems like, Lisa, uh, my impression is that they're just talking. I, it doesn't sound to me like any of the people in this recording know anything about Brennan's disappearance. It seems to me like Lisa is trying to entrap other people by talking about it. But that's my impression. Right. That's my opinion. Listeners will make their right. own opinion. Okay. All right. So just those are out there. So now that you've brought it up, uh, there is, once again, in the same video, there is this QAnon, which is a, a group out there, uh, puts out a lot of theories about a lot of other – a lot of things in the world. That's, the, that's about as far as I want to go with it. But – that in this video, uh, this person who is doing this uh, video is saying that Brennan's disappearance is gang-related. I'm just going to ask you, could it be gang-related? To be honest, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I was told by some gang members that because Brennan put his hands on Taylor, that he was only supposed to get a beat down for putting his hands mm -hmm. on her. Because she's affiliated with the same gang. Mm hmm But did I mean I, I guess I mean you saw this. Uh you did he put a hand on her? I didn't, another girl did. Please say that again, Missy. I didn't see it, but one of his friends who was here that night did. Okay. Okay. So there's that, and it could have been that, uh, you know, we just don't do theories. But uh, that is out there, though. So Correct. maybe this uh, video is not, um, you know, it's mysterious and everything else, but uh, I, don't, I don't know what to make of the video. Uh, people are going to find it. I'm going to have to link to it, even though I don't like to, but I'm going to have to. But uh, how long do you believe this video has been out there, this YouTube video that we're talking about? How long has it been out there? I didn't even check the... Uh, since close to 
almost in the last year. Okay. Did the person who put that video together speak to you at all before putting that out there? Um, yeah. Okay. Actually, they called me mm -hmm. and was talking to me about it. Okay. All right. Um, that's all I really. I just don't don't want to give it too much more attention than it than it deserves. The listeners will find it, and once again, I'll have to link to it. But that'll be about it. Okay. So we've covered a lot of uh, information here. I think uh, there are certainly reasons to believe that it was Brennan in the vehicle. I think there are reasons to believe maybe he wasn't in the vehicle and that something happened uh, in the meantime after leaving your house, after him getting the the uh, backpack and then them getting in this chase that ended, you know, with two of those guys uh, getting caught. I should ask you this. You said that you bailed uh, Dakota out early. Um, how long did Chris spend in jail for trying to evade police, et cetera? Um, I, I want to say like about two months. So not long. Okay. And how would you explain that area where this ra this uh, this chase ended? Uh, the side of the road, very wooded, very open. How would you explain it? Uh, where, where the chase ended? Yeah, where they, everybody really, tried to run off. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's real thick. It's um, like thorns, stickers, or will eat you alive. It's just real, real thick. Okay. All right, so we've covered uh, a lot of uh, information here. Uh, Missy, what's the last year and some months uh, been like? Uh, you've talked about, when we started this conversation, talking about a lot of loss in your family. You've lost a, a son to brain cancer, lost a husband to cancer, and now you have Brandon who is missing, whether from the chase or something else. I mean, what's this all been like? A nightmare. My last decent night's rest was... July 24th of last year. Mm -hmm. What is your other son? Uh, I guess your, their son's names were Brandon, Brian, and Brennan? Correct. Wow, that was uh, that must have been interesting, using all their names. Very <laughs> close. That you didn't make your, it didn't make it very easy on yourself there, Missy, with those names that are so close to each other. Um, what is your son Brandon said about all this? If you can say. Um, he's just, he's just like me, you know, like, why can't somebody just, we don't care who did it, we just, he's like me, just like, can we just have his remains so we can have closure? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has your son, uh, did, uh, it seems like you've uh, been really the point person on this, uh, what has your other son done? Is he supportive, helpful, going on these searches and everything? Yeah, he is, um, and, like, there's a lot of times we split up. Like, there's places that, you know, he hears that he don't want me to go just in case, you know, he was to find his brother. Yeah. Um, we do we do split off, but, I mean, when we do split off, we also make sure the people that are with us are the people we can trust, and, you know, no, nobody come back and try to... Uh, Did your son, uh, did he know, uh, this, your other son, did he know any of these people that we've talked about, uh, Chris, Dakota, any of these people? Does he know any of them? Oh, he knows almost every one of them. does. Okay. Okay. And if you can say, um, do you, does your other son believe that, that uh, Brennan was in the vehicle, or does he not believe that Brennan was in this vehicle? If you can... Excuse me? It's not Brennan. Not Brennan. Okay. Do you have a, a Facebook page or anything like that set up for Brennan, Missy? Um, yeah, we have, what is it, Finding Brennan Smokey. Or my, yeah, Finding Brennan Smokey. Then we have a Bringing Brennan Smokey home. you got a few different places. Right. Okay, why don't you say those again a, a little bit slower for the listeners? One is bring Brennan Smokey home and bring Brennan. What's the second one again, please? 
Fine, fine, you're running smoky. Okay. All right, both on Facebook. Correct. Okay. I should probably ask you this. Now, being that he did run away from this, uh, if the police believe it, I'm not. it's going to be up to the listeners to decide for themselves. Is there a warrant out right. for Brennan's re- arrest because of this, because he fled? Yes. All right, so the police are on the lookout for him. Correct. Okay, they may not be doing much regarding his disappearance, but there is a warrant out for us, his arrest should they come across him. Right. Okay. All right, That's uh, maybe we need to establish that. Okay. Uh, Missy, any last words before we complete this interview? No, that's it. Like I said, it's just more about getting Brennan home and, uh, and you know, just so we can have closure. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No, I mean, at this yeah. rate, at this rate, I mean, we, like I said, we, we don't care who did it. We just, we would just like to hear his so we can have closure in all of this. Okay. Well, Missy, I hope we can continue to keep in contact. Uh, I certainly hope that the program can help you uh, in, in trying to figure out what, what happened to Brennan, whatever, whether he was involved in that chase or not, whether he ran off or not. And uh, if you need anything, you can always let me know. All right. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for doing this. Uh, You're welcome. And thank you for being on this episode of Unfound. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And that was my interview with Missy Smokey. And yes, that is how you pronounce her and Brennan's last name. Smokey, not Samolki. I thank her for joining me and all of you on the program. There's an accompanying video on YouTube on the Unfound podcast channel where I diagram where the chase took place and the terrain where the chase ended. You can judge for yourself how Brennan or whoever would have escaped the area without being caught by police. And really, that's kind of the forgotten fact of this whole disappearance whether the person running away was Brennan or not. How did that person escape? Because although it surely does happen that people who run from law enforcement escape, it only happens a very small percentage of the time. Why? Because the police have the man or woman power, the technology, the vehicles, and most of all the experience to capture criminals. Whereas criminals have virtually none of that in trying to escape. They are at a distinct disadvantage. So whether the person was Brennan or not, how did that guy evade law enforcement on July 24th, 2019? Now, as to whether it was Brennan, please remember that both Chris and Dakota claimed Brennan was in the car. They said this shortly after being caught. How do we know that? Because two days later, that cop pulled Missy over, and he was looking for Brennan. Missy was quite clear about that. In addition, that Chris and Dakota told law enforcement so early that the third person was Brennan means there is no way Chris and Dakota could have known that the third person, Brennan or not, wouldn't be caught. It very well could have been that they said it was Brennan, then an hour later police would have caught Sean Bilbo or someone else in the woods near the end of the chase. This would then make Chris and Dakota look really bad, and it probably would have added another felony charge to all the others they were already facing. So, would Chris and Dakota lie about something that they knew could be possibly be proven to be a lie so easily? That will be something each of you will have to answer in your own mind as we stay in hot pursuit of the truth. I'll leave the theorizing up to you. And that's the program. If you found it informative, please go to the app that you use to listen to Unfound, and give this podcast a nice review. I thank you for listening. I'm Ed Denzel, and you've been listening to 
Unfound.